All right, the last method. We made the uh, we've made the max map speak compass, so we're going to go the other way around. We're going to make the compass speak map. Now, instead of drawing the magnetic lines on my map now, this particular compass is declination adjustable. It's got a little screw right here. Here, I'll zoom in on it. It's got a little screw right here, and it's got a little scale down here at the bottom. It comes with a little key. In my particular case, I'm going to dial it in to 6 degrees west, and I'll show you what that looks like. There you go. That little mark is now at 6 degrees instead of 0. And what that does for you is you can see, let me get that away from it, the doghouse is now skewed in the compass. So the meridian lines are still going north and south. The, the doghouse is just um, pointing at 6 degrees west. So now when I go to use a map, I don't have to rely on having magnetic lines on the map. I can just use the the true north-south meridians that are already on the map. So when I do that, I can take a bearing, line it up, line up my meridian lines in my capsule with the ones on the map, and then when I actually go into the real world um, to point that bearing and walk, I'm really going to be pointing um, off in the direction that my doghouse was skewed, so it automatically takes care of everything. For, it takes care of that for you. It's very neat and it's very handy. So. Um, I guess those are, those last two are the easiest and most popular methods. Either draw the lines on your map, which is very simple and easy, or just have a declination adjustable compass. Now I don't like to tell people which method to use. They're both great methods and I use them both frequently. I would rather you know the downsides to each method and choose what, what works um, for you the best. Uh, so let's talk about the downsides for a minute. In the magnetic drawing the magnetic lines map obviously you have the accuracy issue and that you're going to have to transfer these lines accurately if you're wobbling back and forth um, you know the better you can put those lines on the map the better the other thing is planning if you're doing this you really have to plan um, things more in advance it does take time to do this this was a small map you start doing it to larger maps and larger areas it's going to take um, some more time in doing this to your map Another thing is is that um, you know if things don't go as planned and you're relying on this method, let's say you're out on a week long trip, you have all your maps, all your lines drawn, all the maps and all the areas you think you're going to go, and then your buddies want to drive a half an hour away and hike, and all of a sudden you look at your map, you flip it, and you don't have lines there, and, and you don't have a place or time to get them drawn on. If you don't know another method, um, you're kind of stuck I guess and that's why with all the navigation stuff I think it's important to know as many ways as you can to do stuff just so that you can adapt for di different situations and final this one's a very very minor drawback um, but what this is doing is potentially dating your map as well as we know magnetic north changes um, although very slightly so if I do this to my map it's going to be good this year it's probably going to be good next year and still the year after that um, but let's say I go out to Denali um, this year and I buy a nice map that they have out there I draw lines all over it come back home and I don't go out there for 10 years again the next time I go out there I am a couple three degrees off and I got to start over and buy a new map just a minor thing but it is something to consider and if it's an area that you frequent all the time and are using all the time you're more likely to wear out the map than you are to date it by putting declination on there but um, it's just something to think about in an area that you might not frequent so much all right, downside to this method. The real downside is is that you have to remember to set your compass. Um, if I'm set for six degrees west right now, if I were to get it, get on a plane and fly out out west, I would remember had have to remember to adjust it for the declination there. Now, um, that is obviously uh, that is probably about the only downside to this method. It is a downside, but I don't see it as any disadvantage over this method because if you're going to do this, you obviously have to be aware of your declination where you're going, and this is, and you also have to take the time to do this. So there's no way around thinking about declination in the area you're going. 
So it's just a matter of how um, you plan to deal with it. And the only reason why this one is so easy to forget is because it's so easy to do. You know, I mean, it's just a couple tweaks and you're done. You don't have to, you, you know, you don't have to sit down with your maps for 20 minutes and scribe lines. Um, and, and because of that lack of a big old planning session, it can be easier to forget, but it is an extremely um, good method to use. And it, it, it's just so uncomplicates life a lot of times. And even if you do do um, the magnetic um, north lines method, like I said, if you, if you end up going into a place you didn't intend, um, it, it's good to know this method as well. And speaking of which, you know, in, in the forums we're always talking about getting lost and doing things. Well, you, you might get an area off the map where you didn't scribe your magnetic lines. So, um, and that's what being lost is all about, something happening that you didn't intend. So it's good to know a method that um, is not dependent on having, you so on having something on the map as well.